And today I want to touch on inner healing, healing from trauma and inner wounds, healing of the soul, healing of the heart. I want you to open the scripture with me, Isaiah 53, 5. Now it's a complex subject to unravel in 40 minutes, but I'm going to try my best. I'm going to give you an example. So just pay careful attention and allow most importantly the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart because every person in this place needs healing of the heart in one area or, or the other. We are always a work in progress and as we allow Holy Spirit to bring things up in our soul, he will be, he, when He brings it up, He has grace to fix it. He has grace to heal it. He has grace to mend your broken heart. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says this, Surely He has borne our griefs. Okay, if you don't believe it's sin to underline in your Bible, you can underline the word grief. And carried our sorrows. You can underline that word. It will be two main things that today we're going to focus on. Yet we esteem, we esteem his stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now I've had, I've heard this scripture all my life since I've been in the church. And whenever this scripture was read, most often it was read like during communion. Or before the time that we prayed for physical healing. But I've never paid attention to the verse 4. That before he addresses the health of your body. The healing of your body. Jesus, his mission was to address the health of your soul. The health of your heart. Are you with me? Okay. Because many times... When a person has been abused, rejected, wounded, or hurt in some way, there is an emotional wound that needs to be healed. And what oftentimes happens, and being in a ministry of deliverance of, of over 10 years, and ministering deliverance to people, I find that more often than not, demons use that wound, that hurt, to enter into a person and have a hold in their life. Because a wound, a hurt, a wounded soul, a hurt heart, oftentimes begins to harbor feelings of unforgiveness, pain, rejection, and loneliness, which is sin that opens the door, gives a legal right for demons to operate. And I wish I could tell you that deliverance fixes everything in your life, but it does not. It's one of the means, one of the tools that God has given us as a church, as part of the gospel, to help humanity, to help people, to set people free from demonic strongholds and demonic oppressions. But one other tool that God also has given us, which what I'm going to focus on, is the healing of the heart. Say with me, the healing of the heart. Okay. So I'm going to go a little bit into a psychology so that we understand the way our mind and our soul operates. Okay. Our soul consists of our will, emotions, and our will, emotion, and mind, our thoughts. Okay. And when a person goes through a traumatic event, it could be... A verbal abuse, it could be a sexual abuse, it could be a physical abuse, it could be a sudden death, a sudden uh, thing that happens to them that they're not equipped or they're not able to process emotionally in that moment in time. What happens is in order for us to function and to continue to live on our life, God has designed our soul in such a way, our mind in such a way that it takes that overwhelming emotion, whatever it might be. It could be fear, it could be loneliness, it could be uh, rejection, it could be this pain and shock. It takes that moment in time and takes those emotions, those feelings that you're feeling and suppresses it 
and puts it on a back seat so that your core personality, your core you, can continue on living. Are you with me? Okay. At the same, also, depending on the severity of the event. If the event is very severe, especially it happens particularly in the childhood because children do not have coping mechanisms developed yet to be able to process certain feelings and excessive emotions. In those moments in time, what could also happen is they could dissociate from the event completely and create a separate personality that has, that harbors, that, that, that gets frozen in time and has its own um, persona, feelings, emotions, stuck in that time. For example, if let's say a little girl at the age of seven, something very horrific happens to her, like she gets raped by somebody that he trusts or anyone for that matter, that, that, that the, the shock to her body and to her emotional state is so severe, she doesn't know how to process She's frozen in time. That person can dissociate from the event. And a, what they call, psychologists call, it happens a split personality. And that small little girl at the age of seven, that personality fractures, dissociates and gets frozen in time. While the core personality, the core her, continues to move and advance. Because if she stays in that feeling of shock, overwhelming, hurt and pain, the person could literally physically die if they don't snap out of it. Does that make sense? Okay. Spare it me for a little bit longer. And now the person moves on and they could be in the age of 30. They could actually, I've seen that so many times, not even remember the event. I was ministering to uh, one lady uh, about uh, a month and a half ago. She came, she said, I'm having this uh, severe back pain. I'm going to chiropractors constantly, but this pain and this tightness is not leaving me. I can't sleep at night. Uh, things are tormenting me and I'm here for deliverance. And immediately I discerned that there's, there's more than deliverance that needs to be done. I said, hey, listen, was there any traumatic events that you have gone through uh, that you could recall maybe specifically in your childhood between age of 3 to 13 or maybe even later? But is there something specific that maybe perhaps you can recall that we want to, I want to deal with, I want to invite Holy Spirit to bring healing. And um, she thought about it for about 30, 40 seconds. So she, it looked like she did take some time to think about it. She says, no, not, not, not that I can remember. Well, my... My, uh, my boyfriend overdosed on drugs six months ago. He just, and he passed away. Maybe, maybe that's, that's that. I was like, yeah, that, that sounds pretty dramatic, uh, pretty traumatic. So I'm thinking that's the case. So I'm about to lead her into the prayer of inner healing for that. I said, but hold on, let's ask Holy Spirit to bring up any memory in the case that anything got suppressed or dissociated. And so as I lead her to pray, I ask Holy Spirit to bring up a memory that he wants to heal. All of a sudden she says, she starts sobbing and crying. I'm, I'm asking her, what's happening? What's going on? Where are you at right now at the moment? And she says, oh, this, this, man is, this man is raping me. He's on top of me. He's taking advantage of me. And because my mind was already set to deal with the whole boyfriend death and all this stuff. I kind of had to pull back a few steps and wait, wait a second. How did this person not remember this traumatic event? I mean, you think something like that you'd always remember, right? But that's when a person experiencing excessive extreme emotions, extreme trauma, they can get to the point that their soul dissociates, it gets fractured and it gets suppressed. So the core personality, the core person can move on living their life without so much being too much affected by that. Does that make sense? 
And when that person, when the trauma, when that, when that personality came up, we invited Jesus. Jesus brought healing to the heart. She received healing from the trauma. And then we, the moment she got, received healing of the heart from that event, I said, hey, how are you feeling right now? We, we haven't even prayed for deliverance yet. And she's like, oh wow, the, the tension of my body is gone. Like I'm not feeling any pain in my back. She was just so happy. She was excited. She was like, oh, she thought we were done. I was like, oh no, no, we're not done yet. I was like, now we got to cast out a demon so you can sleep at night peacefully. And then I command a demon to come out. And in about two, three minutes, that demon came out, out of her because he had no more hold on her life. Because also in that trauma, in that wound, she was harboring unforgiveness toward that man that she, that, that took advantage of, rightfully so. She released forgiveness. She also, because that man was, he called himself a man of God, a minister, she also was harboring forgiveness toward God because she associated that man of God with God. And she had to, I don't like to use the word forgive God because that indicates that God is at fault. Uh, the more correct term would be to release God for the responsibility that we placed on Him. Because and she was having a hard time and I had to explain to her. I said, listen, do you believe that God gives us free will? That we're agents of free will? She said, yes. I was like, do you believe that God honors your free will? She's like, yes. I was like, do you believe that God also honored His free will even though it was evil? It took her a second, but she understood. She was like, yes. I was like, do you know that God's heart was broken when it was ha what was happening to you? He was hurting and that's why... G that's why the Father had to send Jesus on the cross to die to earn healing for your heart so today you can receive that freely from Him. She said, yeah, I understand. I was like, would you release God now from the responsibility placed on Him? She said, yes, I would. And as she released the forgiveness to the, uh, to the abuser, she released God from the responsibility. She received that healing and her heart was whole and um, I believe that she's going to come and testify when she's ready and it's just uh, um, that's how inner healing looks like the healing of the heart looks like and Isaiah 61 1 says this the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted broken means shattered into pieces separate pieces and Jesus says before he says to set the captives free just to 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 uh, to do all uh, all of other things he said I came to preach and the next thing that he says he says I'm here to bring the shattered heart of your pieces together I'm here to mend you and um, that's what Jesus is here to do. That's what Jesus is here to do. Let's define trauma quickly. Trauma is a wound or fracture of the inner person. It's a result from exposure to an incident or series of events that are emotionally disturbing or life-threatening with lasting adverse effects on individuals function and, ment uh, and mental, physical, social, emotional and spiritual well-being. Trauma is a side effect of events that happen to you on, which are beyond their control. It can be a form of physical, verbal, emotional, sexual and spiritual abuse. Also it can be anything from a road accident, falling down the stairs or sudden bad news. These are all major trauma events. A single event that changes the course of our life. It can also be um, multiple minor events that can eventually cause a very similar effect on our life. Traumatic events both have long and short-term consequences on our life. Let's, let's look at three different traumas that psychologi psych psychologists, professional psychologists define. There's three different traumas. It's acute, chronic, and complex. Acute trauma is a result of a single traumatic event. That's something like what I explained, a, you know, you're going through a, uh, a, a major event, you know, physical abuse, sudden death. Um, sexual abuse or anything like that that just, just shocks a person beyond what they're able to handle at the moment uh, and then it just just changes their life it changes their character changes their mood changes just changes the trajectory of their life number two it's chronic trauma 
chronic trauma is um, repeated and prolonged events. Now, they could be maybe minor events, but if they're repeated and continuous, eventually they have some effect. For example, a person that is an abusive relationship and um, a verbally abusive relationship. It might, might not be like anything drastic. It might not be like, you know, sexual or, or physical abuse, but a verbal abuse, you know, sometimes uh, uh, words hurt more than, uh, they, they hurt you, your soul more than a physical uh, abuse. And uh, when a person is in a verbal abuse relationship and, and they constantly hear you're stupid, you're nobody, you're dumb, and, and they, they just, they, they can be belittled, they can be uh, pressed down, they, they can be um, just uh, hurt over and over again. The person can develop that inner wound, that trauma in their heart that eventually is as severe and as bad as one major traumatic event. Are you with me so far? And uh, number three, uh, psychologists say it's a, a complex trauma. It's exposure to varied and multiple traumatic events, often, in, uh, often an invasive and interpersonal nature. And this is one of those that very, uh, very, very complex and very hard to deal with because it's a multi-layered uh, events, different types of events across different time frames in childhood and teenage and adult uh, years. And it takes time to work with them and to help them peel that layer by layer and and receive uh, for them to receive help okay let's look at the consequences of trauma the effects of a soul wound caused by trauma are depression emotional overreaction emotional shutdown triggered emotionally switching of personality or moods divided within itself loss of time and memory hearing multiple voices self-harm suicidal thoughts and suicidal attempts now some of you are like uh oh i found in one or more of these categories well that's why we're here and that's why the spirit of god is here to bring healing i remember i was ministering to this one person some years ago and um he was he's actually came to one of our prayer lines and uh when i was talking with him uh the things that he came to receive prayer for was the fact that he was undecisive and I was like well I don't know if it's a demon or not uh, you know he's like no I'm sure it's a demon and so he was telling me he's like it's like when it comes to a decision making I'm I do my studies he's a very logical man I do my things and I research and I completely understand him because that's how it is I was studying for uh, I was uh, doing research for uh, a week and a half on the best steamer to buy for $30 I'm like why am I wasting my time you know, but I just want to make sure what I'm getting is a, is, a, is a good thing. It has the best reviews and for various different uses. Okay, so they use that kind of a man. I completely understood it and connected him on that point. But he said, after I do, and I'm sure of my decision. The moment that comes to pulling a trigger and making a decision, I get divided. I can't make up my mind. I start hearing other voices. And he's like, it goes from, he's like, it's not normal because it goes from the smallest things of deciding what kind of food I want to eat. To the fact that I'm not married, I've had really good solid relationships, God-given relationship, godly women, and I could not make up my mind to go with them. And so as I begin to, as I begin to uh, minister, and at that time I just understood very little about healing, uh, inner, uh, inner healing and healing of the heart, but supernaturally and divinely the Lord kind of led the prayer and then that man uh, the men receive healing and first what I thought what was that came up was a demon but it wasn't a demon it was literally a trauma that he experienced when he was a teenager and it was a fractured part of his soul when I asked what's his name he gave me his name I'm like wait what's going on because usually demons give you like name like fear anger witchcraft and things like that I was like wait well I'm, I'm confused what's happening I then because I saw Bob Larson do this I said hey how old are you and he's like, I'm 15. And then I understood, okay, I'm dealing with the fractured personality of the person. I asked him, what happened to you? And this and this and that. And then the Lord Jesus brought, brought help. He went through a very traumatic event with his father. And, um, and what was interfering with his decision-making mechanism is that 15-year-old him who did not have that experience, who did not have that knowledge that 30, 30 plus year old had it. And 
it sounded like him so he thought it was him which was him but the fractured part of him a 15 year old him with a 15 year old experience does that make sense and now a 35 year old and a 15 year old arguing inside of him which both are him and he can't make a decision because one side of him thinks this the other side of him thinks that but I understood very little of that time when I was ministering to the person but what shocked me was an email that I got from him that he said you can't believe it first of all the voice stopped in my head number two I can actually decide what I can eat freely and easily He's like, when it comes to decisions, I do my research. I know what I want to get. And I do it. He's like, I'm shocked myself. Because his heart was healed and whole. His heart was single. He was not divisive. And so that was very interesting uh, experience that I had when it come, comes to that. Hearing multiple voices. Now, in this regard, it also could be demons that are talking on inside but oftentimes people themselves said but it, this person is a seven-year-old that's talking to me or oh, this person is 15 year old inside of me they're talking if usually demons the first of all demons are way older than seven or 15 they're they've been here since the flood okay so they're a couple thousand years old um, and uh, when a person begins to recognize it's a little child talking to them or, or, or uh, another one of them that's talking, that usually indicates a fractured soul, dissociation from a trauma and they need healing. Uh, another one, big one that I notice when I minister in a healing is chunks, chunks of time that are missing out of their memory, specifically out of the childhood. People would say something like, I don't remember anything from the time of 5 to 7. I don't remember anything from 7 to 13. It's just like that chunk of their life is gone and they can't see it, that they can't remember it. And when we begin to lead people in the healing and we find out right before that there was a traumatic event that I went through. Sometimes they don't even remember it. Holy Spirit brings it up, brings healing to them and they can remember now that part of their life and they are whole and healed. Are you with me so far? Another consequences of trauma, another consequence of trauma is sickness in the body. Let me explain to you. When the soul is sick, it begins to have adverse effects on your body and you eventually your body begins to be sick. Now, I don't have the article with me but there's, there's multiple articles and studies that have been done and you can google it and see it for yourself where scientists already have come up to this conclusion that when a person experiencing severe emotional distress or issues like depression like the things that we talked about emotional reactions mood swings and all of the other stuff uh, anxiety it begins to ev affect their body in a negative way and Oftentimes, it's tied to suppressed immune system, functions of your gallbladder, your thyroid, suppresses your digestive system, and people in this, in this state either can gain or lose weight. Even though, and oftentimes people would say something, well, I'm eating healthy and I exercise, but I can't get health. I can't be healthy because if they have a wound in their soul that is causing their digestive system being suppressed or their immune system to be suppressed. For example, they could be eating healthy meals but their body is not absorbing necessary nutrients because their body, their, their, their uh, digestive system is suppressed. And it's not, and, and oftentimes even doctors saying, listen, after the studies, yes, you're eating this and this and this, but your body is just not able to retain iron. Your body is just not able to retain this vitamin on this vitamin. And oftentimes, it's not a physical problem, it's an emotional issue. And when the heart gets healed, the body, it's like it was suppressing your immune system, 
holding it down. It was functioning at 30%. Now it's been released. Now your immune system, your digestive system actually begins to do what it was designed by God to do. To heal and restore your body. And with time, even without supernatural healing, your body restores and recovers itself. I remember I was praying for one person who had severe eczema. And when I began to pray for her, it looked like demonic manifestation but I've already been doing that for long enough and I, I begin to understand the difference between a demonic manifestation and a fractured soul when it comes up it's just there's you can tell it by the eyes by the way it, it reacts demons are very aggressive usually when a wound comes up it's, it's usually scared and, and and very timid and even though sometimes it could act reactively because it tries to defend itself uh, it still has a very much like a fear and and then uh, timid uh, kind of approach and so when I begin to deal again, this, this girl have gone through a very severe past, very traumatic past, multiple events. We've gone through some of them. She never came up and asked for eczema, even though I saw it on her hands everywhere. But she said on her body was even, was even worse. And later on, I found out when she, uh, she testified that after the prayer of the healing of the soul, her body, her skin just became better because her soul her immune system her her body was not being held down held hostage by her soul oftentimes people experience tightness in their chest in their backs in their muscle because as their soul is trying to suppress and hold down these emotional feelings not to come up it begins to reflect in their body of tightness because that's what soul is doing and that reflects on the body does that make sense when people got released they felt sense of relief and they were able to um, just receive automatically without even any supernatural intervention of healing many soul wounds are as a result of a basic emotional needs not being met as a person we hope we have four fundamental basic needs that every human needs in order for them to function um, wholesomely Number one, it's physiological needs. It's air, water, shelter, clothing, and sleep. Uh, if a person gets deprived of these physiological needs, oftentimes they can develop an emotional trauma or a wound. It's a safety needs, physical and emotional safety and protection. Number three, it's a love and belonging. They need, uh, we need friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. When oftentimes a person gets rejected, I was ministering to this one gentleman who his wife has, uh, uh, the wife was not unfaithful, uh, was unfaithful to him and cheated on him and left him. And he just got so hurt and wounded and he, re and he just received this lie that I'm not good enough and I'll never find one like her. And it was all harboring a wooden event when she came and brought him the ring, said, I want to be with you anymore and because I've been seeing somebody else and Ayos Amigo and so that wounded him and this guy is already 15 years past that event can't have a relationship and can't have peace in his soul ministered to him Jesus brought healing invited Jesus into his memory he was so shocked to see Jesus in his memory he was, I can't believe it. It's him. He ran and embraced him. The Lord healed his heart and uh, waiting for testimony for him to be married. He's actually seen somebody right now. And so, um, which is, that was, that was already a milestone for him. And um, so when we get deprived of, of these things, friendship, intimacy, and family, sense of connection, oftentimes a trauma can be um, developed. And number four, esteem which is respect, self-esteem, recognition, strength, and freedom. Oftentimes, people have uh, suppressed emotions or hurts or pain when maybe in the in a childhood, they were made fun of by their friends. They thought they were their friends. You know, kids always do stupid things and they do things, they think that's funny. You know, if, and for other person, maybe that 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 grew up in a healthy family in a healthy home with a, with with a, with a healthy emotional upbringing you know they're making fun of him and 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 that person's like ah whatever left left with everybody but another person another child that maybe 
does not receive enough love and affirmation from their parents or maybe lives in a broken home when the same event happens to them and the same kids make fun of him the same way they made fun of the other and it didn't affect him for this child it becomes an emotional wound and trauma and then they can't function normally in relationships because they think that if they get close to somebody they're gonna get hurt if they get close to somebody they're gonna get uh, rejected they're gonna be shamed and now all their life the event happened when they're six but they're 40 now and for 24 right my math is correct 34 years there are not functioning correctly because their heart is broken and they want to have a relationship their core self their mental self they understand i need relationships i need fellowship they come to church they try to be a part of a home group they try to be a part of community but something on inside of them is, is driving them away from community driving them away from being closer driving them away from being committed and oftentimes they don't even know what it is and they go like, oh yeah, I, these people didn't look at me right way, so they don't love me. You know, I left the church. Pastor, he did not shake my hand when I came in. He just passed me by like I'm a nobody. And uh, I can't go to the church anymore because, ah, oh, damn, man, they're just not loving. Most of the time, it's not that the pastor is not loving. Most of the time, it's not that the church is actually not loving and caring. I'm not saying there's not, sometimes mistakes are made. We're all imperfect. But most of the time what I find when people have that attitude, if you dig deep enough, you'll find these soul wounds of rejection going back in their life and in their past and in their childhood. See, you have to understand that from the age about 2 to 12, you are, a, you are a recording device. You're recording everything. Everything's been recorded. From the age about 12, 13, for the rest of your life, all you're doing is you're replaying what you have recorded for first 10 years of your life. That's it. Some of you have dysfunctional relationships with your spouse because you never had a father. Or you had a father, but your father and mother did not have healthy relationships. And you want to have a healthy relationship. You love your spouse. You want to have a loving kind relationship but you have been conditioned and programmed from 2 to 12 and you can't help yourself but you just play out what you have recorded all these traumas all these wounds all these things that have been piled up and you want to change you make a decision to change you do it for three weeks you do it for three months you do it six months and you're back to your default setting which will happen to you between that age. Now, traumatic events and different things can happen even further in your life, as I've explained earlier. But these years are very crucial. And oftentimes when we begin to deal with people, help them with deliverance, help them to figure out what's, what triggers them, what gets them to do what they do, it all eventually ends up between the ages of 2 to 12. Now, there could be many other events, like I said. But if you peel and peel and peel and peel and peel, you end up in that age bracket. And in John chapter 14, 30, I believe, Jesus says that Satan, the ruler of this world, he has nothing in me. Okay. And the other translations say he has no power in me. What Jesus is saying is that Satan has no strings that he can pull on he has no soul wounds that he can trigger me and have me act out of character have me get angry with my wife and then i come back and say honey i'm sorry it wasn't me well technically you were you're right that was probably a six-year-old you that got triggered that has no reasoning really and when the core you came back you're like wait why that's so stupid. Why am, I, why am I arguing with you? I'm so sorry. And then we regret it. We apologize. We ask God for forgiveness. We ask our wives for, uh, for forgiveness. We ask our children for forgiveness. And then some time later, we find ourselves again in the same situation. And then you ask yourself, why am I getting triggered? It's so stupid. It's not supposed to be like that. But that's where it comes from. 
experiences can vary from the smallest things to the great things that people completely dissociate and completely other personality that comes up. Apostle Tom, who is a great friend of mine, he was working with this person that had a 42 different fractured personalities in him. And this, the, the, his soul was so broken and shattered. This person would determine to go someplace and then finds himself in a completely different place because somewhere along the line another personality took over and made different decision went somewhere and then the next day he wakes up in a different city and he's like what am, where am i what am i doing what's happening another personality took over so when he began to minister to him he's like i'm down to 42 and i don't know how much more i can help him but now this person is actually in his mind all the time which was a big deal for him now this person actually is holding a job which was something he could not he's literally on disability it's a big important still a lot of things to go through still a lot of still even some deliverance that needs to take place but uh the the the, the amazing part is that god is healing his fractured heart he shattered pieces and bringing it all together jesus is here to heal your heart to heal your soul for you to live in complete freedom there's three elements that you have to address and sometimes it starts with one or sometimes you can start with the other the three element the three elements that that you need to address number one is deliverance if there are demons behind your wounds which most of the time that i find is that there are they amplify those feelings or the 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 inner wounds are already triggers but demons would amplify those feelings make it that much more fear anxiety and all of those other things okay you need to receive deliverance from demons oftentimes that takes it from a hundred down to 30 but the triggers are still there then you have to deal with those emotional wounds and ask jesus to bring healing to the soul and the soul gets healed now there is no more triggers however there's the third element is that because we've been triggered all the time because we've been acting this way all the time because that's how we've been th thinking for so many years we have developed a neural pathways in our brain that even when the trigger is not there the demon is not there but our mindset is still the same we're still thinking the same pattern we're still afraid when there's no more trigger and no more demon amplifying those this uh, feelings of fear does that make sense so this is where Apostle Paul says your life is changed by the renewing of your mind. You need the Word of God to renew your mind, to realign your thinking, to create new neural pathways in your brain of thinking about the subject of the matter differently. That's why Jesus says in John chapter 7, I believe, he says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That's the deliverance aspect. But then a few verses later, he says, you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So which one is it? Knowing the truth or the sun sets free? It's both. It's the complete wholesome approach to freedom. Deliverance from demons, healing of the heart and reading God's word until it changes the way you think so that your life can be changed. Are you with me? How do we receive healing? And we're going to go into the time of ministry. When a person uh, we'll start with a severe more severe case dissociation um, we need to ask all the spirit to bring up that memory to the surface oftentimes like i said severe dissociations people can't even remember the event holy spirit brings up the memory oftentimes a person so that person then needs to allow all the feelings and memories to come up now oftentimes it's a scary event and scary thing because a person literally is reliving that event that just happened to them Okay, so this is the most important thing is that all the feelings, all the things, all that part of the soul has to come up so that he, Jesus can have access to it. Okay, we allow that to come up. We invite Jesus quickly because then when Jesus comes, peace comes. So that the, that wounded part of the soul comes down. Then we ask Jesus to reveal if there is any lie that a person has embraced when that wound happened for example like i said this gentleman that that his wife left him and he embraced a lie that he's not no good and he's never gonna find another person that's a lie from the enemy we renounce that we repent for that lie renounce that lie are you with me so far okay 
then we ask Jesus, is there anybody that we, this person needs to forgive? Because unforgiveness is an open door to a demons. Okay, before we get to deal with the demons, I mean, you must release unforgiveness. Oftentimes it's the abuser. Oftentimes maybe we did something that caused the event. We need to forgive ourselves. Or we need to release God because we place the responsibility on God. God, you did this. You allowed this. My mom died because, you know, I prayed and you didn't answer the prayer. Whatever the case might be. Okay. And then after that, we ask Jesus to heal the heart. And this is a lot of times people just begin to weep and cry because they feel the safety. They feel the love, they feel the embrace, they feel the compassion of Jesus healing them. And then we ask, and we, we, we tell them, hey, now with Jesus, leave that memory and go into the place that Jesus leads you, someplace safe and wholesome. And that's it. And then the proof that person got healed, ask them to recall the memory again. They recall it and there is no more triggers and emotions and tears and screaming attached to it. Oftentimes what I found that memory becomes such a faded event where before they could recall the smell, the taste, the, the everything as if it just happened to them. When they get healed, they can just recall, yeah, something happened to me, but I can't tell the details. That was certainly my case in my, when the Lord uh, re did uh, healing in my heart. And um, same, in the same sense with suppressed emotions and wounds, we allow them to come up. We allow them to come out. We allow that to, to experience that moment, the, the, the feeling. We invite Jesus. We hand those emotions of bitterness, of pain, of, of loneliness. We hand it to Him. Oftentimes people we visually see handing a, some sort of an object to Jesus that represented those emotions. I remember I was praying for the guy and I was like, what are you giving to Jesus? He's like, I'm giving Jesus my bat. And that bat represented his anger towards his dad. I'm seeing, giving Jesus my bed. Jesus took the bed. He felt like that anger was released. He had received the embrace of Jesus. He got healed by Jesus. He forgave his dad and was changed man after that. And so that's how we minister in a healing. Now today I want to do that. Do a mass in our healing event. It's going to probably look something different that you've maybe normally got used to. Uh, we did it in Philippines. It was just amazing 2,000 people receiving inner healing it was just an incredible experience and the deliverance that took place afterward was was people really received the touch of God and other places and when we do that encounter and today for the first time I want to minister to our church because I feel like everybody else around the world is receiving the benefit of it I want you to experience the healing love of Jesus in your heart as well okay so it's gonna just I want you to follow my instructions and it's going to look similar to what I just described. We're going to close our eyes and we're going to ask the uh, Holy Spirit to bring up the memory. Now, listen to this. The first memory that pops up, you might think your core self might begin to defend it. Oh, it's silly. It doesn't matter. No, no, I, I, I got over it. Trust Holy Spirit. The memory that comes up, go there. Okay. Oftentimes you'd be surprised what you thought is silly, how actually, how much it affects you. Go to the first memory. Let that memory come up. Let those emotions come up. Let those feelings come up. Don't hold anything back. We have some minister that will be able to minister to you if, we, if you need to have a, a special extra attention. Let that come up. We're going to invite Jesus and just listen to my voice and follow along. Okay, I'm going to guide you through this process. I'm going to guide you through this process. In Romania, when I was ministering, there was a psychologist who was a pastor. He's one of the top psychologists in Romania. For 25 years, he's practicing, or 20 years he's practicing that. He, after the service, he came to me and said, listen, I minister for 20 years to people and as a psychologist, but I'm also a pastor. I, an American company hired him to, uh, to, as a psychologist to uh, uh, help their top staff, top performance staff. He said, what you taught today, I've never heard it taught in this way. And in 45 minutes, you've helped more people that have happened in 20 years. So I know what Jesus is about to do. Just trust the process. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit, I pray over this room, over every person. I declare that Jesus is safe. This place is safe. And then anything that you're about to do, you have grace to finish it. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, I ask you that you will bring up a memory or a traumatic event or a suppressed emotion that you want to heal right now. That you want to heal right now. So I want you to allow those things to come up. It's a safe environment. And don't worry if you're going to be crying, screaming or whatever it is. Listen, we are here to help you. Let it come up. 
Let it come up. Now I want you to identify the strongest emotion right now that you're feeling. It could be a feeling of fear, feeling of betrayal, feel of anger, of unforgiveness. Okay, let it come up. I want you to label your emotions. It's a very important part. What is the emotion that you're feeling right now? Jesus, I invite you right now into their memory. I invite you right now into their memory. Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus. I want you to begin to look for Jesus in that memory right now. Whatever you're at, in the room, in the car, on the field, whatever it is, begin to look for Jesus. Jesus is there right now. He promised never to leave us or forsake us and He comes every time we call. He is there right now. I want you to find Jesus and I want you to look at Him. Okay. That's it. That's Jesus coming. You can begin to feel peace and comfort and safety around Him. Jesus, is there a lie that they've believed due to this event, due to this trauma? I want you to listen to what Jesus is saying. He's going to help you right now. He is the Spirit of Truth. He will never lie. What is He saying? Focus your, focus your ears on Jesus. What is He saying? What is the lie that you embraced because of that trauma? Is it because you're worthless? You're not good enough? You're ugly? You're overweight? You uh, don't have any skills? You don't have any future potential? You're not loved? Let Jesus reveal that lie. I want you to repeat this after me now that you know the lie. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for believing this lie. Name the lie. Name the lie that Jesus revealed it to you. Say, right now, I renounce the lie of the enemy. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. In Jesus' name. I am not defined by this event. In Jesus' name. Jesus, is there anyone that they need to forgive right now? Is there anyone that they want they need to forgive in this memory? I don't want you to think all your life, just this memory. We're dealing with this event. In this event, Jesus, is there anybody that needs to forgive? Whatever the name that comes up to you, right now begin to release forgiveness. Say with me, I forgive. Name that person's name. Or if it's yourself or God. Say, I release forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Lord, you've forgiven me. And because of that, I can forgive others. I forgive them, Lord. I release them for everything that they have done to me. And I hand justice into your hands. Jesus, I want you to speak the truth right now into their situation. Speak the truth about them now. What do you think about them? I want you to hear the voice of Jesus. What is He telling you right now? The Bible says that the Spirit of God is in you and He is the Spirit of truth. Right now, begin to hear what He's telling you right now. Receive the truth and the truth will set you free. What is He telling you? What is the truth? Now I want you to hand Jesus over that pain. Just stretch out and give it to Him. It might look like a broken heart. It might look like an object that represents the trauma or that event. But I want you to hand it over to Jesus. I want you to see Him taking it from you. That pain, that, that suffering, that anguish, that sorrow. Let Him take it. That's why He died on the cross for you for. Jesus name. Now I want you to embrace Jesus. Go to Jesus. Let Him embrace you. Let Him embrace you. With His love and compassion. With His arms. Let that light that illuminates from Him. Let it just, just cover you. That love. The Bible says He sends His Spirit. He pours out His Spirit. 
pours out his love by his spirit into our heart right now receive the love of God that's what brings healing that's what brings healing receive that embrace and receive that love receive that healing in Jesus name and now I want you to together with Jesus walk out of that memory go to some place safe walk out of that room walk out of that car go to some place safe some place where Jesus will lead you in Jesus name for watching this sermon. If this was a blessing to you, would you let me know in the comments below what stood out to you from this message? What are you taking home with you from this message? Also, if you enjoyed these messages, would you help us and hit thumbs up to this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get new videos every single week delivered to you on your YouTube app. If you go to hungrygen.com forward slash sermons, you'll actually be able to download the transcript, the notes, and the quotes of this sermon and the rest of all of our sermons free of charge. Until next time.